All right, guys, so let's go ahead and annotate the rest of Kat's article together. Now, you have the best of both worlds here. You can either do a electronic copy of the article in a Word document and use the highlighting tool that's available to you in that word processing software to highlight in blue the parts that you think are considered logos, or you can print out a hard copy from your uh, guidebook reader and you can take a highlighter and start marking it up that way. Hey, 10th graders, let's be clear about something. This is not an informational text. This is a speech that a female was delivering to a group of men, Congress, over a hundred years ago. This was an actual woman, Carrie Chapman Catt, uh, trying to persuade men using persuasive appeals that the women's, a woman's right to vote was inevitable. It's coming. Just like we progress using certain things from knowledge that we learn, she felt like this was something that was just going to happen which is the word inevitable. So we're just gonna go through this line by line, maybe paragraph by paragraph, to really hone in on what she was trying to persuade these men to think. So let's take the first section. Woman's suffrage is inevitable. Suffragists knew it before November 4th, 1917, opponents afterwards. So she starts off with a very brief point, very specific point, about some people knowing it beforehand, some people knowing it afterwards. And what happens? You know as well as I do that sometimes it's not until something happens afterwards that the light bulb goes off, that you see the revelation of something, and you, you understand, oh, that's why it was so important. So she starts off here that it is inevitable, and we are going to try to figure out what she means as we go through the rest of the other part of it. Look how she starts off the second paragraph. First, the history of our country. So this is something the members of Congress knew very, very well. They all know the history of our country. So she's gonna use that particular point to really help them understand and see that because of the history of our country, this first point she makes, it's inevitable that women's suffrage is coming, whether they like it or not. The next line in Kat's speech uses words like revolution, rebellion, against, okay, all these ideas and terminology that you think, you know, make up somebody standing up against something. And that's exactly what she's going for. She's like a force against nature, really trying to help these members of Congress understand that something needs to change in our history. So it goes forth, it goes on, the, 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 the history of our country is also continuing in the second part. And again, this is something the members of Congress know firsthand. They're educated men, they've studied history, they know our origins, they know where we came from, and they know where we are now. And you can just almost imagine them listening to every word she's saying. So now let's go ahead and highlight some of the usage of logos, which is again a persuasive appeal based on facts and figures. So we see, like we mentioned this one earlier, that the line from the beginning of things, that's an example of a persuasive appeal that's considered logos, very simply because you can trace back through history when something began, an exact date, an exact month, and so she, we're gonna call that a persuasive appeal that's known as logos. Another example of logos is at the bottom of the speech where she says that Governments derive their just powers from the consent of the governed. The colonists won and the nation which was established as a result of their victory has held unfailingly that these two fundamental principles of democratic government are not only the spiritual source of our national existence, but have been our chief historic pride at all times the sheet anchor of our liberties. So I just felt like this particular part was established as a result of something. Again, this is something that you can go back and see that this particular thing was the cause and the result of it was this.